Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag. Is het bulletin van zaterdag. As every weekend, this Saturday bulletin will be in English. We have some Morse code words for today and an SSTV image in PD90. Hello, this is Mike Marsh, G1IAR, and welcome to the TX Talk podcast of the GB2RS National News. And now the Radio Propagation Report, compiled by G0KYA, G3YLA and G4BAO, who've checked out what we've got in store for us, as they predicted on Friday the 16th of September. The Solar Flux Index followed the NOAA prediction this week, declining to 85 by Thursday. Geomagnetic conditions were regrettably not as settled as we would have liked, with the K-index hitting three at times thanks to a continued high-speed solar wind stream from a coronal hole. Luckily, no Earth-directed coronal mass ejections were observed, and there were no major solar flares either. This weekend and early next week, NOAA predicts geomagnetic conditions will continue to be unsettled with a maximum planetary K index of 4 at times. Next weekend, that's the 24th and the 25th, may however be a little more settled. The sun's looking fairly spotless at the moment and the solar flux index is predicted to be a pretty lacklustre, 75 to 80. Band conditions continue to improve, though, although maximum usable frequencies are being suppressed by the lack of sunspots. The good news is we've got the autumnal equinox this week, so we're at an optimum time for the north-south pass on HF, such as like the UK to South Africa and South America. September can also offer some good opportunities for grey line propagation on the lower bands around sunrise. Andy, Mike Zero, November Kilo Romeo reports 40 metres has been good to the Pacific this week and he also worked Ken, Tango 32, Alpha Zulu on East Kiribati on 20 metres. So it's all about being on the right band at the right time, which pretty much sums up the story of my life. And now the VHF and upwards propagation news. Late summer is the classic high pressure season of the year. Together with early morning mist and fog, there's plenty of reasons why VHF and UHF tropo should be on your operating schedule. At the end of the hot weather last week, conditions did fall off a little, but there were some huge thunderstorms, as you've seen on the news, which produced rain scatter right down to 1.3 gigahertz. This coming week, there'll be high pressure to the south of Britain and partially over southern areas at times, and this should offer good tropo across the southern half of the country, down to the south over France and Germany overnight as the surface cools. Daytime heating usually destroys any surface nighttime temperature inversions, which are needed for tropo. The downside is, though, that there may be a series of lows tracking over the north, which means wind and rain and no tropo. It's a late show for the EME operators in the early part of this new week, with moonrise in the early evening getting later as the week progresses. Lengthening moon windows push moon set out to early afternoon at the end of the week, and the lowest losses will occur early in the week. The Orionids meteor shower continues with no large peak right the way into November, so continue to look out for enhanced meteor scatter conditions this coming week. And that's it from the Propagation team for another week. In preparation for the 2017 IARU Region 1 conference, the RSGB has updated its consultation forums so that UK amateurs can suggest topics on matters such as HF and VHF operating or technical recommendations, band plans, contests, EMC and amateur radio development. The initial phase is an open call and will be followed by further opportunities as UK papers are developed or, subsequently, when all meeting papers are available. There are separate discussion forums covering EMC, HF, VHF and microwave and more general matters. We'd really appreciate initial topics by the middle of October in time for the annual RSGB Spectrum Forum meeting, which is on the 29th of October. More general help on the forum system, including registration, is at rsgb.org slash consultations. If you wish to take part in the consultation, click on the active consultations and then IARU consultations 2017.
The UK Space Agency's Astronaut Flight Education Programme Support Manager, Susan Buckle, will be giving a presentation at the RSGB convention on Saturday, the 8th of October. Along with Kieran Morgan, Mike Zero X-Ray Tango Delta, she'll be talking about the 10 UK ARIS Amateur Radio Schools contact with astronaut Tim Peake, Golf Bravo 1 Sierra Sierra, during his Principia mission on the International Space Station. An RSGB video celebrates these historic school contacts and the range of linked activities the schools have enjoyed. You can view this RSGB YouTube video via the YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash the RSGB. From the 3rd to the 10th of October, the British Young Ladies Amateur Radio Association will be hosting their very first international Young Ladies Radio Convention to be held in this country. There are ladies and their partners booked into the Novotel in Milton Keynes from Australia, Canada, Denmark, Great Britain, France, Germany, Iceland, Scotland, Sweden and the USA. And you can get more details on this event at bylara.org.uk. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. Now AMSAT North America playing a 5 to 10 gigahertz transponder set on a satellite expected to launch into lunar orbit in two years' time around September 2018. Heimdallah is a three-axis stabilised 6U CubeSat with a max mass of approximately 8 kilograms. It will have a cold gas thruster for inertia dump and a star tracker for navigation. Deployable gimbaled solar panels will produce up to 100 watts of DC and electric propulsion will be used to achieve lunar orbit. Proposing these downlinks of an omni transponder at 10.451 GHz plus or minus half a meg, a directional transponder around 10.4575 GHz plus or minus 3.5 meg, and an analog transponder 10.4665 GHz plus or minus 2 MHz. Now to Radio Amateur Young Timers, encouraging young people to consider space and communications. Thousands of young people have been inspired by being involved in the Amateur Radio on the International Space Station, or ARIS, program, putting them in touch with astronauts. The Radio Society of Great Britain, RSGB, has produced a nine-minute YouTube video to celebrate the recent school contacts made by British astronaut Tim Peake, GB1SS. The video captures the exhilaration of the launch into space, competition by schools to host the ARIS contacts, and showcases the variety of science, technology, engineering, maths and arts activities that helped pupils to understand more about space and amateur radio. The contacts themselves have often led to young people going on to get a foundation license and consider their future in the STEM generation. The UK Space Agency's Astronaut Flight Education Program Support Manager, Susan Buckle, will speak at the RSGB convention on October 8. In her presentation will be the 10 UK ARIS school contacts with astronaut Tim Peake. And the Wireless Institute of Australia is to run a symposium in November for those mainly already involved in STEM-like activities to see what's possible and can be achieved back at home. Finally weird and wonderful. Improving chocolate taste by electricity. Liquid chocolate, when subjected to an electric field, apparently changes shape and adds to its flavour. This means less viscosity and improvement to the taste, with the coca solids in it standing out. The US National Academy of Sciences reports that two patents are now sought for the new electric field technology manufacturing process. For WIA National News in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW.
Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks om 1900 uur te beluisteren op PI2NOS en ochtends om half elf. Aanvullende informatie bij de uitzendingen is te vinden op www.pa0ete.nl. Wil verder gerust je tips, commentaar en desnoods priet praten naar xapenstaartjexdv.me. Ga jij nog naar het tuincentrum komend weekend? Ja, ik wil daar het komend weekend nog naartoe. Zou je voor mij dan een zakje randaarde willen meenemen? Tuurlijk.